Hi, I hope you all have had a great um, holiday break, Christmas break, and then a New Year's break, and I hope you enjoyed this extra day that we have. So, Happy New Year. Um, We're going to dive in and take notes today on section 4.1. Section 4.1, Additive, Multiplicative, and Ciphered Systems of Numeration. So you've heard people um, in the olden days doing their ciphering. Maybe you've seen that on some old movies. So hopefully today, or in this chapter, we'll learn more about our number system by studying other number systems. And so... um, after people um, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. Um, the number system came about slowly. It's thought that probably people used a tally system, maybe using physical objects such as pebbles or sticks, or maybe making knots on a vine. Maybe they made scratch marks in the soil or tally marks or um, scratch marks on a stone, or maybe notches on a stick, some way to record numbers. And this was fine for a long time because they were able to maybe um, keep track of how many livestock they had or keep track of numbers they needed for their agriculture. But as time went on, they needed a more efficient and accurate method of calculating and keeping records. You couldn't, um, it would just become too cumbersome to keep up with a tally system or to keep up with a bunch of pebbles to figure, to keep up with how many um, cows you had, for instance. So um, as civilizations developed, um, the Egyptians came up with this symbol symbol like this for our, um, to represent the number 10. And the Babylonians used a symbol that looked sort of like this, kind of like the less than symbol for 10. And so we're going to write down that a number is a quantity. And it answers the question, how many? in a numeral is a symbol. Used to represent a number. So just like in language, a few letters of the alphabet, the hour 26 letters, can be used to construct large words and large numbers of words, whole books of words. In the same way, in arithmetic, those 10 digits that we use, 0 to 9, can be used to represent um, large quantities of numbers and different things involved using numbers. And... Um, A system of numeration consists of a set of numerals and a scheme or rule for combining the numerals to represent numbers. And there's four numeration systems used by different cultures. Um, One is the additive. One is the multiplicative. One is ciphered. And the one we haven't heard of today is place value, which is what we use. So 
So we're going to see a lot of symbols today. We're not going to memorize these symbols. I will give them to you to use on a quiz or a test. We're just going to learn how to use them. Um, and by the end of the chapter, our goal is to better understand the system that we use. And we use the Hindu Arabic system. The first system we're going to learn about is the additive system. It is a system where the number that's represented by a particular set of numerals is the sum of the values of the numerals. And the first, one of the first additive systems was Egyptian hieroglyphics. The Egyptian hieroglyphic system, which dates back to about 3000 BC. So we have um, a chart in our book that we're going to use for the Egyptian numerals. So here is the, um, the chart. It's divided into three columns. We have the Hindu Arabic numerals, which are our numbers, the corresponding Egyptian numerals, and then their description or what they were called. So um, the Hindu Arabic numeral one matches up with the Egyptian numeral, which also looks the same, but it's called a staff. The Hindu Arabic 10, number 10, matches up with the Egyptian numeral, which looks kind of like an intersection symbol, but it's called the heel bone. And now you could see that as the back of someone's heel. So these are our symbols. We have the staff, the heel bone, the scroll, the lotus flower, which is sort of difficult to draw, the pointing finger, the tadpole, or the whale, and the astonished person. You don't have to memorize these. I will give you the chart on the quiz. We just need to learn how to use them. So, first one, example one. Write the following numeral. as a Hindu Arabic numeral. So the Egyptian numeral is pointing finger, pointing finger, pointing finger, scroll, 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 heel bone, staff, 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 staff. And we have to write the Hindu Arabic number that matches this. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look for the pointing finger symbol. And you will see that it represents 10,000. So there are four of those. But this is an additive system. So really, the first pointing finger plus the next pointing finger plus the next pointing finger plus... Next, we have the scrolls. So we have three of those, and those are 100 values. We're just looking at these values on the chart, the pointing finger and the scrolls. So 100 plus 100 plus 100. The heel bone we saw a minute ago to stand for 10. And then the staffs are one each. So plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. That's an additive system because every symbol, its value just gets added all together. So we've got one, two, three, ten thousands, plus three hundred, plus ten, plus one, two, three, four. So that's thirty thousand three hundred and fourteen in Hindu Arabic. So it's just interesting to note um, the order of the symbols was not important. Um, they didn't have to be all spread out in a line like this. They might have been tadpole, staff, staff, scroll, scroll, 
heel bone. And this block here represented a number. And um, so that was fine too. Um, let's see. And for subtraction, they could just like scratch one of those off. It did say they were able to do multiplication and division, but it was much more difficult, and we aren't going to learn that. They did not have a number, a symbol for zero, and but they did have an understanding of fractions. So if they used this symbol, it was understood to mean take the reciprocal of a number. So um, this symbol with three staffs under it. That's three staffs, but it means the reciprocal of it, so it's actually one-third. So it's kind of interesting. Um, let's see. But you can see why this would be cumbersome. And if you had to write really large numbers, this hieroglyphic system takes a lot longer than, like, our system. And it said, for example, you would need 45 symbols to write the number 99,999, where we only need five symbols to write that out. They need 45 of this type symbols in order to write that out. Um, so, the Roman numeration system is another example of an additive, additive system. It was later than the Egyptian system. And we have a list of Roman numerals. A lot of these you may know. We'll go ahead and write these out. And do Arabic. So I stands for one. V stands for five. X stands for 10. L is 50. C, think century, is 100. D is 500. And M, think millennium, is 1,000. The Roman system has advantages over the Egyptian system. Um, it uses subtraction principle and addition principle. So we read Roman numerals from left to right, and we add the numerals, or we add the values from left to right, and let's also write that this is also an additive system, additive system. So we add numerals left to right unless a value is smaller than the value of the numeral to the right. Then we would subtract. And I had never really seen it written out like this, but um, it was just a little refresher. So if you've got this, then we add that. That would be 5 plus 1 plus 1. So that's the same thing as 7. But if it's like this, you've got the 1 and then you have the five, where this number is smaller than this number to its right, that means we subtract. So it's actually five minus one, which is four. And I know when you were younger and you practiced learning these, you did, you just um, got really good at it probably, at knowing that this was four and that this was six. But this is the rule written out for you. And I actually skipped example two, and I didn't really mean to. So let's back up and get it. It's another Egyptian numeral practice. We have 1,203,462, and we want to write as an Egyptian numeral. Okay. 
So the symbol for million is the astonished person. I'm not going to be critiquing your <laughs> drawings. Um, let's see. Two. So what you need to do is you kind of need to break this out by place value. So you have one million. And then you have 200,000. You don't have any of the tens of thousands. And then three, that's 3,000. Then we have 400, 60, and two. So astonished person stands for a million. Now we need 200,000. Well, we have a symbol of 100,000, which is the tadpole. So we need two of those. And 3,000. Well, we have a symbol for 1,000, which is the lotus flower. I do not do this well. It's like a moon shape, kind of. And then a little stick. And a little thing here with the X, sort of. So a crescent moon, a stick, and a little circle. Crescent moon, a stick, and a little circle. All right, so there's our lotus flowers. And then we need the symbol for 100. We need four of those, which is the scroll. One, two, three, four hundreds. 60 is a 10 symbol, so we need the heel bones. We need six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six heel bones, and then two staffs. So that's the Egyptian numeral that stands for this Hindu Arabic numeral. And next, let's go to Roman numerals. Example three. We're going to write, and yeah, for your homework tonight, you're going to um, write out a bunch of Egyptian numerals to stand for the given Hindu Arabic numeral and vice versa. So just be prepared. You have MDCC. L, X, X, V, I. So you might just want to go through it and make sure that all of these are decreasing. Are they decreasing? Well, the M is the millennium, that's a thousand. D is the 500. C, C, those are 100s. L is 50, X is 10, and 5, and 1. So just using the chart that we had a minute ago. And then you would add it up. We have 1,000, 500, 600, 700, 50, 60, 70, and 6. 1,776. And you don't have to break it down this way that I did it. You could just use your calculator if you wanted to. All right. Next, we're going to write, for example, four. Write C-M-L-X-I-V as Hindu Arabic. numeral. Alright, C is a hundred. M is a thousand. Oops, let's just... Well, yeah, that's fine. L is fifty. X is ten. I is one. And V is five. Let's make sure they're decreasing. Are they decreasing? No. This went from small to big, so that's actually going to be a subtraction symbol. So 1,000 to 50, we're getting smaller, getting smaller, getting smaller, getting smaller. Oops, bigger. So smaller to bigger, this is a subtraction symbol. So that means this is 100, 1,000 minus 100, so that's really 900. And then we have 50 and 10. And this is 1 less than 5, or 5 minus 1. 
So that's four. So it's 950 plus 10 is 64. Alrighty, example five, write 439 as a Roman numeral. So you can see how the, um, the Roman system really simplified writing numbers over the Egyptian symbol system. It's much easier to work with, easier to draw too. So 439, let's see, we need 400, so we could do C, 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 30, let's do this, let's write out 400, 30 and 9. 30 would be three tens. Tens are X's. And 9 would be. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm struggling on how to explain it. A 9 is a 5 and then 6, 7, 8, 9. But this 400 here, we're only allowed to do um, three symbols repeated. A symbol is not repeated more than three times. And right here, we're trying to use a C four times, so we're not allowed to do that. So 400, think about the, the symbol that comes after the 100 symbol. It's the D, which is the 500 symbol. So 400 could be written as 100 before 500. So 400 is the same thing as 500 minus 100. And in Roman numerals, to show subtraction, you want to put the smaller symbol before the larger symbol. So that is the 400 now. So it's C, D, X, X, X. And then we would not be allowed to do this either. I wouldn't be able to do five and then six seven eight nine I couldn't do four um, four repetitions of that one symbol so nine could also be ten minus one so to show ten minus one we want to do the one symbol before the ten symbol so it would be like this So that is the way in Roman numerals they would write the number 439. That's a little bit, um, takes a little bit more thought. And at the bottom of page 166, they do another example of showing how to write out the number four, 646. So you might want to look at that if you thought that this one was kind of confusing. So um, the Roman numer numeration system can also be used for multiplication. And the way that they would show multiplication is they would put a bar over a symbol. Um, and it means that those numbers are multiplied by a thousand. So the way, the way to show multiplication by a thousand is to put the symbol and to put a bar over it. And that means five times a thousand. And an X with a bar over it means the X's value times a thousand. And what if it was more than one symbol? What if it was CD with a bar over it? 
Well, that's 100, and that's a 500. So that means we're subtracting those, so that's 400. So that's 400 times 1,000. And you might remember when you were working with mental math more, you could multiply the, the non-zero numbers, and then you could just count how many zeros there were, and that's how many will be in your answer. And one last one. Let's say you have XCIV with a bar over it. Just write down what your numbers are. You've got 10 and 100 and 1 and 5. That means that we're going to subtract 10 and 100 there. So that's 90 plus, oh, it's little and then big. So we have to subtract those also. So that's 94 times 1,000, which is 94,000. Lots of things to practice with here. So one last example, and then you can try your assignment. It is right. One thousand twelve thousand three hundred forty five as a Roman numeral. So that's ten thousand plus two thousand. Really, we need to leave that together as the twelve thousand. So there's not a symbol for thousand, and we'll have to do that bar. So we'll leave the thousand piece together. So we have twelve thousand plus three hundred plus forty plus five. Okay, so how do we show twelve thousand? We do the symbol for twelve with the bar over it. So the symbol for twelve is that with a bar over it. Three hundred, those are three C's. Three is fine, just can't do more than three. Forty, I can't do four X's, because that's too many. So we can do the X, if X is 10 and L is 50, we need 40, which is 10 before the L. Small before the big tells us we're gonna have to more subtract. And then five, we have the symbol for five. Alrighty, so you can go ahead and try your assignment and um, give it a go and we'll see each other Thursday and we can answer questions. Alright, I'm looking forward to the new year with you all. Bye-bye.